Hey, we've got another piece of test equipment, a new toy from Akihabara. This is an old piece of kit. It's a uh, leader brand, they're still making equipment these days. It's a LAG-65-01 audio spot generator. Um, this is basically a, a frequency generator, a sine wave output. And um, it's a spot generator, which means it doesn't have a dial on the front which you can turn up and down and set an arbitrary value. It's, uh, it's got presets. So you've got you know, 70 hertz, 100, 333, 500, all the way up to uh, 25 kilohertz. So it's, it's only the audio range. Um, it's a little bit restrictive in the sense that you can't dial in your perfect frequency. But the advantage of that is that if you're doing uh, multiple tests, uh, you can always make sure to get the same uh, frequency exact spot on. Um, especially if you're doing uh, multiple testings. Like if I was to make a whole range of or a whole series of uh, uh, amplifiers and I had to test them one after the other, I can just hit the button and know that I've got the exact frequency. So all my tests are done at the same frequencies and all my tests are valid and uh, done under equal conditions. I don't have to sit there and dial it in and you know, tweak it and tweak it and get the right frequency again and then test. And then I've got to sit there and tweak it and tweak it and get the right frequency and then test. Just hit the button, test. Hit the button, test. So it uh, makes things really uh, really quick and easy. So um, this is, like I said, made by Lita. It's an old bit of kit. I think it's early 80s vintage. Um, I'm not 100% sure. It cost me 4,320 yen from the, uh, the usual junk shop that I buy this stuff from. And uh, yeah, it's got an RCA out, level adjust in there, get your little screwdriver in there, power switch, local and remote indicator, it's just an LED there, um, because we got a remote control here, I don't think it's GPIB or HPIB, the uh, uh, Hewlett Packard interface bus or general purpose interface bus, I think it's just, uh, that's just replicating what's on the front panel, so it's just uh, contacts, so you can have a like a relay board or a computer that just is closing contacts just like you're closing the contacts when you hit the buttons I think that's how it works then you've got the local remote switch there to choose if you're using the front panel or the connector um, power in fuse and a uh, serial number on the back 9030068 so yeah what's this is probably the 68th one of these made or something I don't know anyway looks like it's still got the plastic on some of it so we'll peel that off and get rid of that so at least the uh, the underside of the box is should be in good condition all right so uh, first of all the old adage don't turn it on take it apart pull the screws out screws are a little bit rusty I might go and get some uh, nice stainless steel ones to replace them just so it's nice and shiny when we uh, clean things up and there's some screws on the side let's see what we have let me open this thing up. Now I I sent an email off to Leader Japan and um, I got some literature back. It's like a five-page document, a PDF file, a scan of the um, the old instruction manual. That's all they had. I wasn't able to get the uh, any service manuals or anything, but hopefully if I translate it, it might have some interesting interesting information. But I'll make that PDF available in the comments below, um, the original and the translated version. So that's what we got inside. We've got a uh, power transformer, usual stuff. Power supply here looks like uh, probably a bipolar because we've got a a, um, a sine wave. So there's a couple of bits and pieces in there. What have we got? Seven nine one five, seven eight one five. So there's your positive and negative uh, fifteen volts. The seven eight one five, I believe, is a positive, and the seven nine one five would be the negative, I believe. We've got a seven eight one two. So yeah, so that's a positive twelve volts. So we've got positive twelve volt and positive and negative fifteen volt. I'll say the fifteen volt is being used for the oscillator, and the twelve volt is probably for these relays and the control circuitry. So we've got the switches on the front panel, all lined up with LEDs, and then on the back, there's all our switches. And they will be switching these uh, relays. And we got a whole heap of resistors. So I think these resistors are what's going to be um, setting our frequency probably. They're probably, the relays are, are most likely switching the resistors into an RC network. Which will then be doing its thing with the uh, the oscillator here. Which looks like the, um, we've got a, was that oven? An ovenized, or is that just insulated? I'm not sure. I have to see the other side of the circuit board. I don't want to pull on that too hard. But yeah, they're... Then we got the um, looks like we got the uh, LEDs just wired down to the circuit board. Down here, little board across the top with all the LEDs in there. 
Doesn't look like the resistors. Oh, maybe the resistors are on this board too. Yeah, they're probably up here. So inline resistors for current limiting. Huh, tantalum capacitors there, little blue dots. And this, what are these? They're just some transistors. So what I might do is I'll pull as much as I can. I'll pull this board out so we can have a look at the underside and um, figure out where things are going. Uh, maybe I can just take the bottom case off without taking the uh, the board out itself. That will be easier. But yeah, it looks like there's an adjustment on there. Just one pot, which is probably like a calibration that does the uh, the whole range. You probably can't calibrate each individual range as such. All right, so yeah, in that foam block, we got two connections there. One going directly to ground, and this one comes around and does some stuff, and then the other one goes around and does some stuff via the pot. So I wonder if that can carefully... <sighs> nah, that looks glued in there. Yeah, that's, that's glued down. I don't want to open that up too much because I don't want to damage the thing. These black things, they're like a... they're high uh, accuracy. There's 0.25 percent, 10,000 picofarad capacitors, 50 volts, Soshin brand. Yeah, usually capacitors like electrolytics are generally about 20 percent, maybe 10 percent if you're getting uh, a little bit fancy. But these black ones, because they're in the oscillator circuit, they're 0.25 percent. Wow. So yeah, there's a uh, the pot there, the blue one. That'll be the uh, adjustment. It's probably like an overall frequency adjustment, and there's a little tag here which looks like a, a test point, maybe. So you can clip your scope on there and twiddle away with your tongue at the right, right angle. Those two cans, you can see the two metal cans, they are LM318H, two of them. I'll quickly grab a, uh, a data sheet and see what they actually are. I just looked them up. Um, it looks like they're just uh, operational amplifiers. I was assuming that was going to be the case. They're nothing too fancy. Uh, just the case that they're in, just being old. Often you'll find, even in your equipment, they'll use the metal cans for shielding uh, for uh, high critical applications, or, or uh, critical high uh, performance applications is what I'm trying to say. And it looks like there's a lot of unpopulated stuff over here. I'm not sure what is going on there, if there's other models of this. This is a Dash 1, maybe there's a Dash 2, Dash 3 or something, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it looks like there's a whole heap of circuitry that's not there. So maybe there was uh, options for some some more stuff. Just, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be like a mirror of anything. But yeah, it, it works how it is anyway. All these resistors, they are... All sorts of different values, 47.79K, 178K, 1.269K, yeah, 631.8K, yeah, all, all different values, so I am, I'm not, not going to touch them, because that will be a pain in the bum if you get them mixed up, or if you uh, can't get the replacements, but yeah, what I'll, what I'll end up doing... I might replace the capacitors. I don't know if these are looking a bit bulgy or not. A little bit. They've got a little bit of bulge from them. I don't know if that's normal, just manufacturing, or if that's they're actually becoming bulgy. But there's only a couple of capacitors in there, so maybe I'll replace them, just as a matter of course. And uh, then give the, uh, the pot here a tweak and see what happens, see what it adjusts. And then um, we'll be able to stick it on the, the key site multimeter i got here and uh, get these numbers to be nice and close. Now in the uh, manual as well it says that this 70 is actually a lower like a 40 or 50 so maybe that's been changed um, by the manufacturer or maybe someone has that gone and had a go at it. It looks like someone's oh they all look look hand soldered maybe there's a little bit more flux around here someone may have customized that to be the value that they wanted rather than the, uh, the value that came from the factory but it looks like that that plate across there is removable too. I wonder if it's uh, double-sided or something. Let's uh, take it off and have a look. OK, 
because I would assume that there are multiple oh that's kind of stuck down no it's not double sided I would, I would assume that in the factory they'll use the same case and then depending on the uh, the model they'll just put different different strip across here for a different um, frequency presets or a different frequency range maybe they use the same case for a uh, RF spot generator or something uh, black dot I don't know what the black dot means maybe it was a uh, this is a rubbish unit so get rid of it or a black mark for something that went wrong it came with a, uh, a blown fuse so I don't know if that's indicative of anything but it did turn on when I plugged it in and it did seem to work so now we've had a look inside power supply I think that's the output amplifier actually if we have a look yeah see this orange one the orange wire here comes to the output and then the blue and the red that's to the uh, level so that would be like the gain or something yeah it's coming from the oscillator through the pot back to the uh, amplifier and then out the orange one so that's just a two transistor amplifier sitting there and we've got an oscillator over here so let's plug it in and uh, see what it says alright got the scope set up with the RCA to BNC cable that I've made and uh, plugged straight in if we turn it on you can kind of maybe you can see there kind of green if I flick the switch at the back that will go red there you go red and green red is remote green is uh, local so we want local because we're going to use the local controls and if I hit a button what 5k there we go 5k and that is telling us it is 5.05 or 0.04, 0.05. .04, it's just turned on, so that oven also there hasn't warmed up and all that. So that's going to be, um, yeah, we should leave it on for 10, 15, 20 minutes or something before we start actually doing real measurements. But it'll do for now. 1K, we've got 1.004, 006-ish. And at the moment we've got, what, 2.47 volts. So if we adjust this pot, yeah, there you go, you can see that getting bigger and smaller it's a bit sensitive but it does work so that's working quite good 15k I have to change the uh, time base but so not a bad sine wave there 25k not bad piece of kit it works not much reason to po go poking inside. It's almost a disappointment when that happens. But I'll um I'll probably replace those caps just as a matter of course because eh, they're probably about 30, 30 years old, nearly 40 years old, I guess. So um it won't hurt to replace this uh, the electrolytics. But all the switches seem to work. What's that down to 70 hertz? Uh, I don't know which way I'm oh there we go. still looking good so all the buttons work quite well I'm just gonna give this thing a clean up and a, uh, a bit of a tweak so I'm gonna go get some capacitors replace them and then we'll um, once we've got all that done we'll see what that blue pot does see what that actually uh, adjusts oh yeah my favorite bit oh yeah it's like peeling a sunburn so good look at that oh it's all coming off in one piece after 30 30 or 40 years usually this stuff just goes on like glue and hardens but that that is nice it's like brand new oh that's so good I think I'm gonna sit here and just admire this for a little bit before we move on to the next step mm -mm. and we're all done new capacitors I've cleaned a bit here and there I put new screws in because the old ones are a bit how you doing a bit all corroded and stuff so these are all stainless steel screws just because they're cheap and I had them gave the front a whole a whole front a clean pulled the buttons out and gave those buttons a clean as well bit of a scuff on the front but there's not much I can do that without repainting then I've got to redo the whole front I'm not gonna do that so a ah, bit of battle damage isn't too bad but it's all clean and it's looking pretty good 
the um, capacitors I used, uh, United Chemicons or Nippon Chemicon, um, the old ones were SL series, which are an older cap. They're discontinued, but they're 85 degrees, and they actually correspond or uh, cross-reference to a newer series called uh, SMG. I've actually not used those. I've used uh, KMG. So the S means at 85 degrees. The K, or the K series, are uh, 105 degree rated. So these are equivalent series, just a higher temperature rating. So um, no worries there at all. Should be the same performance, just a bit more reliable and uh, working all right. So there's no actual calibration in this thing. Um, there's no way to adjust the output frequency at all. I guess um, it's maybe hand selected resistors or maybe they're just using high precision resistors and um, it's close enough. But this uh, pot here, I was thinking that may have been a um, a calibration, like a, a group calibration to shift the uh, the frequency up or down as needed, but it's not. It's actually a um, like a gain control or something. It might be an interstage sort of gain control where it's setting the, um, the output from the oscillator section into the amplifier section so you're not overdriving the amp. That's what I think it most likely is, but I've kind of tweaked it and the, the waveform just gets larger and smaller in amplitude. There's nothing else going on at all. So um, this is pretty much all done, and um, we might stick it on the scope and see if it hopefully works. Um, there'll be a bonus if it still works. So um, I'll put the lid on, and uh, we'll get the scope on the desk, see what it outputs. Alright, we're all set up, ready to test. Uh, I've got one of the lights off, so the lighting might be a bit funny, but bear with us. Should be alright. So I've got the... Uh, Frequency generator here, plugged in through a um, 50 ohm Canair cable plug into the uh, the Tektronix, so that's going to be all nice. If I hit one of these buttons, we should see it on the screen. 1K, look at that, beautiful. 1.005, 006-ish, close enough for audio frequencies anyway. Um, it might be a little bit funny, I don't know how long this is actually supposed to sit um, before it becomes accurate with the... Uh, the crystal in there and that little foam block. It does actually say in the uh, manual, so um, maybe 10 minutes, half an hour, who knows. It hasn't been on that long anyway, so that's good enough anyway. You got a 10K, looking at 10.1, 10.08-ish. Pretty good. Now, it also says in the manual that you can press more than one button at a time and it'll add up whatever numbers you press. So if I press 10K and 15K at the same time, it should say 25K. Perfect. The trade-off, of course, is that um, you're going to have slightly reduced accuracy. But, I mean, I want 25K and I've got 25.1, 25.2. Eh, close enough for an audio amp, I reckon, anyway. 1K, 2K, 3K, up to 25K, down to 70K. Oh, we have to change the time base for that. Uh, 70K, no, not 70K, 70 hertz, of course. 100 hertz, down the base region, get your subwoofers pumping. But yeah, that's working quite well, I think. Um, I'm going to call that a win. I was uh, expecting the worst, hoping for the best, and it turns out we got a good result. So that there is the LAG 65-01 audio spot generator. Uh, restoration and testing. It's all good. That's ready to go on the bench and uh, be used for some audio amp testing. All right, guys. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Don't forget we've got the Patreon. Hit that subscribe button if you feel like it. If not, just keep watching the videos. I'll be happy with that. We'll see you next time.